The true origins of the ancient Egyptian civilization, India. The ancient upper and lower settlements along the river Nile were originally occupied by farmers, but later by a colony of kings and warriors who migrated from India. According to the Mahabharata, they originally moved away because Lord Parashuram drove them out due to their warlike behaviour. This new habitat was originally known as Kemet, meaning a place with black fertile soil. Surplus crops was obviously a big attraction. In between India and the Nile was Mesopotamia, yet it was all part of the same world empire, connected by trade routes and cultural exchanges. And many kings recorded the in ancient Sumerian, Egyptian and Indian writings include similar names. Along the Nile there emerged upper and lower kingdoms, but by 3100 BCE the ruthless king Narama from the upper invaded its rival and became the first pharaoh of a united Egypt. Narama established the role as a godlike status. The country then entered an era of prosperity with the expansion of arts, religion and literature. It was a non-Vedic civilization that prospered at the outset of the Kali Yuga and meanwhile India declined. However, Egypt imported Indian culture, but with their own unique spin. Amongst the architectural achievements were of course the pyramids. They were not originally built just as tombs, but state-sponsored portals to the next life. The philosophy included the soul, its transmigration and communion with the divine. The first step pyramid is attributed to Imhotep, who was an all-round genius. Imhotep means he who comes in peace, so that's evidence he may have come from abroad. But most convincing are the clear Vaishnav Hindu tilaks on his body in this particular drawing. The original layers of limestone in pyramids that followed concealed the structure's core and gave it its surface a smooth finish, gleaming in the sunlight. Excavations of a pyramid dated 3000 BCE revealed an engraved verse about reincarnation from the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 2, verse 22. Some say the pyramids originally represented the Vedic Mount Meru, a Maha Meru. This is similar to the dome-shaped temples of South India. Note that in the Indian Vastu Shastra, pyramids are believed to nullify negativity. It seems the pharaohs began to use them for more selfish purposes, to nullify any bad karma. The Great Pyramids of Giza's southern shaft in the King's Chamber pointed directly to the stars on Orion's belt. The purpose was to allow the deceased pharaoh and his servants to reach Osiris. A major purpose was to send people to planets of the kingly forefathers, Pritaloka. But the obsession of preserving and mummifying physical bodies was surely due to material attachments. Anyway, then there's the Sphinx. Sphinxes were ancient symbols of the progress of human existence and temple guardians. Now consider these. In the Hingom National Park in present-day Pakistan, just west of the Indus Valley. Now these are not natural rock formations and are dated around 10,000 BCE. The Sphinxes of the Sri Shiva Nataraj Temple in Chidambaram. A carving of the Radharaj Purumal Temple in Chibuvanai. The Egyptians, according to their own records, originated from the sacred land of Punt, the home of their gods. Punt or Panth referred to a holy land with pandits. India as their ancestral home is supported by the finding of human DNA in North Kerala, similar to that of some of those in ancient Egypt. Now let's look at some of their gods. Amun was depicted with blue skin and having feathers in his crown. He is often described as a symbol for creative force and the most powerful of the gods, like Lord Krishna. Amunyet is the consort of Amun and they were both said to be existing before creation. This makes her similar to Krishna's consort Radharani. Mut is described as queen of the goddesses, mother and she who gives birth, like Durga. 
Konsu's complexion is white, like the moon. He carries a heka, which represents a plough, like Lord Balaram. Amun, Mut and Konsu are sometimes worshipped as a triad, similar to Jagannath, Baladev and Subhadra, or others say like Sita, Ram and Lakshman. The Egyptian god Pitta is from the Sanskrit Pitta, meaning father, a reference to God the Father as creator, like Lord Brahma. Nefertum was the god of each morning's creation of day, associated with the lotus flower, very similar to Lord Brahma who sits upon a lotus flower and each of his days is a new creation. Horus Shohar is directly another name for Lord Shiva, but Atum seems to have more in common with Shiva because he is associated with snakes and has a human head. Nun or Nu, who with blue skin raised the gods from the primordial waters, is similar to Garbhadakshai Vishnu, and images of him raising a boat is similar to Vishnu in the form of Matsya. Sheshat, the goddess of writing, music and astrology, like Sarasvati. Kunem, with the head of a ram, is said to have fathered many gods, like the Hindu Manu, Daksha. Babi or Baba was the monkey god, the chief of the monkeys or baboons, similar to Hanuman, although with much less self-control. A pedimak, like Nishingadev. Like the Hindus, the Egyptians were also conceived the four corners of the earth as a cow. Now, like the Vedic Hindu priests, Egyptian priests would shave their heads and wear white cloth, chant prayers, burn incense, took care of deities, perform rituals on boats on the Nile, like the role of the Ganges. Like in India, Egyptian scribes and teachers had seekers. The Opet festival, similar to Ratha Yatra. Pharaoh's crowns were decorated with the symbol of a cobra as a sign of respect and the power of the kundalini within. Ramesses was pretentiously titled after the ideal ruler, Lord Ram of the Sun Dynasty. The specific meaning is begotten by the sun god Ra. Now the name of the river Nile comes from the Sanskrit Nil, meaning blue. The irrigation methods of ancient Egypt were similar to those that were practiced across India. And the final example. Note this image of a 19th dynasty emperor of northern Egypt. Hey, he's wearing tilak marks. Thanks for watching and please share with others.